the game to see the boxing boys. And welcome back, everyone. We are listening now to it is uh, the bo- it's the boxingvoice.com. And now you, I'm Sports Swami here. Now join me on the line. Uh, this man here is going to be fighting November 25th, PBC on ESPN. He'll be taking on the ever durable Cuban sensation, Udell Johnson. I give you the pride and joy of Winter Park, Florida. I give you it's Daquan Arnett. And uh, Daquan, I'll start off here with. Uh, well, he, he wanted a big step up fight. You've been wanting guys who are top 25, top 30 level. This is a man who's up there. He is a guy who has beaten decent opponents. He's only lost to two guys who are elite level or medium level opponents, and Willie Nelson and Jorge Cota. How big do you view this fight for you? How big do you view Udell Johnson overall? Um, I think on paper, you know, it's a big fight. You know, it's a big step up as far as, like you said, with his, with his ranking and, you know, the uh, the caliber of guys he's lost to. So, in, in that perspective, it's, it's a big fight for me. So, what does he bring to the table? When you look at Udell Johnson, what is different about him than your past opponents? I don't think you know, anything's really different about him other than, um, you know, he doesn't he doesn't really care about getting hit as much as other guys. So uh, he, he's there. He brings the action more. So um, I, I think that's about the only thing that's really different about him. It's, it's coming from my last guy, the last guy I fought, Josh Conley, you know, he had a, a more of a defensive mindset. You know, he tried not to get hit and, and try to make it a harder fight for me. We're going to go back to Johnson in a second. So take us back to the Conley fight. As you mentioned before, it was uh, you versus him. It was PBC on Bounce TV. Uh, you took him on. It was a split decision victory for you, an uh, eight-round fight. Uh, what went right, what went wrong, and how tough was it fighting a guy who, as you said, he's very awkward and he fights defensively. He would rather not get hit than engage. Right, right. I mean, um, it was, it was just a, a, a more of an adjustment, you know. Um, those are the kind of fights that aren't always TV friendly, because um, you know, being a fighter, you know, you got you have a guy that's defensive minded, but at the same time he's looking to hit you, so you can't initiate too much action and become reckless and jeopardize getting caught yourself. So, like I said, those are the kind of fights that aren't really TV friendly. But um, I just I just had to make adjustments, you know, and just stay a little stay, stay busy in the lows of action and uh, find a way to win. You say that you make it sound so easy, but it's it's very difficult because I've talked to a lot of guys, and as you mentioned that part where, you know, you're trying to keep mentally prepared, you're trying to go, okay, I'm not going to go excited, I'm not going to try to literally try to attack this guy, I'm not going to overcommit. How tough is that for a guy like yourself who is an action fighter? You, you, you view yourself as a guy who goes to a fight and you try to win by either knockout or by a lot of action. So how tough was that mentally for you? Holding back and making sure you don't overcommit. Um, it, it, it was a uh, pretty tough, you know, because um, like 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 I mean, a lot of people know, I, I enjoy giving the fans what they want to see and giving the action and and um, landing the big shots. But you know, on guys like that, you know, that just that that kind of fight just made me grow more as a professional, as a fighter. Um, you know, it, it has my discipline inside the ring, and you know, sticking to the game plan. So. It was it was definitely a, a learning experience, and uh, it was good for me and good for my career. Was it tougher for you doing all that while it was in Florida? I mean, it's, e- it's easy to do it when it's in New York, New York probably, or Indio, California, or right. even some other place, you know, like Las Vegas, where it's not, you know, the fans aren't there for you. You can just, you know, oh, I'm not going to see them again. Was it tougher for you fighting literally in Winter Park? You know, you're home away from home on a PBC card. Was it tougher, you know, keeping the game plan when your friends, your family, all, you know, your your relatives, they're there to see you. They came to see you, and you get a guy there who'd rather stink out the joint. Yeah, um, it, it was, you know. Um, I wanted to give the fans and my, my my people, you know, a really good show, and um, it was it was definitely hard at times to just say, you know what, I got to be smarter instead of uh fight for the crowd, it was, it was definitely harder than it would be, like you said, fighting out of state or in, in somewhere else where the fans aren't there for me. Um, but like I said, man, it just, it just helped me grow as a fighter and become become more, uh, become smarter and just more disciplined inside the ring. You've been, this will be another quick turnaround for you. Uh, last time we spoke, you were going through, you, were, you had a long layoff, you took on Travis Hartman, 
a little less than four months later, you're in there with Joshua Conley. Now, three months later, you're going to be back in the in the ring. This time with Udell Johnson. The goal, what's the goal going forward? Going into 2016, how many times have you and your your team want to go, want to fight? I mean, you aiming for like five fights, four fights, six fights in uh, 2016, or do you want just less fights but more bigger, meaningful fights? Um, well, honestly, man, right now um, my focus is purely on the 25th and um and Udell. So we actually haven't really discussed uh, 2016, but like I said, right now my my focus is is purely on Udell. But going forward, you know, um, we'll, we'll see what the future holds. Uh, I, I like I like to remain active. Um, I feel like that's when I'm at my best. And uh, like I said, man, hopefully, hopefully, uh, in the future we can stay, we can continue to remain active. But right now, my, my focus is on Udell. So take us to Udell. Uh, 34 years old, supposedly. He could be 40. We're not sure. You know how it is sometimes for birth certificates. A silver medalist in the Olympics, as you mentioned. He's a guy who doesn't mind getting hit. He's more of an action fighter. He, one of a few guys, I'd say, who knows how to fight inside and outside. So who have, you, who have you and your team brought in to sort of mimic a style that's more amateurish, you know, where it's based on throwing more punches rather than sitting on punches? Who are some of the guys you brought in to sort of give you a feel of what he might try to do in there against you? Um, well, um, sparring, you know, we've been working with um Joseph Elegle, who was uh once was a, a top a top prospect um, himself. And, um, he's getting ready to make his comeback actually. Um I've worked with I've been working with uh, James McGurk and um actually getting ready to uh work with uh, Antonio Topper Jr. this week. Is, so you enjoy that, sparring with guys who are, it seems, either younger, hungrier, or are making more of a comeback. Do you, would you, is that what you prefer, having guys who, experience-wise, they can't match up with them, but more energy-wise, they have that in spades, and you feel you, you know, they'll just be able to go more and more rounds because they have more energy to go more and more rounds? Exactly. Um, I mean, it all, it all depends, honestly, on the, on the fight, but... Um... I like to prepare my hardest, so you know, like I said, like guys like Joe Joseph and uh, David McGurk and Tarver Jr., they're definitely going to push me, and you know, uh, they're not going to, they're not. Those these are guys that aren't primarily just sparring partners. They don't want to just get in there and you know, and just let you move around and get your work. You know, these are guys that are going to get in there. They're training for their own fights, their own careers at the same time, so they're they're pushing me and continuing to try to get better themselves and trying new things and, and really, really, you know working hard to try to get better at the same time. So these are the guys I like to spar. I don't like to necessarily spar the guys that are just, you know, just hanging around the gym and just, just want to spar and just, you know, the guys that aren't really dedicated to the sport and and aren't really uh, focused on making a career for themselves because at the end of the day, those guys aren't really pushing themselves that hard. And they aren't going to push themselves that hard in, in sparring. You know what I mean? No, I get you. I get that part. I understand what you mean with that. I I guess what I was wondering is, did you, did you or your team think of maybe bringing in a guy who has more of that Cuban style, a guy who's more slick, a guy who, who you know, can switch, you know, stances from southpaw to right-handed, you know, finding a guy who's more cute in the ring, because that's what Johnson seems to be, a guy who's, he, he doesn't mind getting hit, and he will get in there, and he will throw, bet, throw down, but he is a guy who seems to want to land more volume shots, you know, land three, four punches, right. land... Five or six. How to, did you guys try to get somebody like that, or is he just a too weird of a style in terms of just different blends of this and that to get a guy who can mimic him perfectly? Um. Well, you know, uh, a lot of guys aren't really going to want to uh, honestly mimic that kind of style because you know they're not fond of just you know putting their. Like I said, the guys that I'm sparring are focused on their own career, so they're not going to mimic him too much because, like I said, he doesn't mind getting hit. But, I mean, my Quan partners, they do, they do pick up the value, and they all, they all push me to the limit. Once again, it is the Quan Arnett. We're talking a lot of things here. So he's getting ready for his PBC on, well, it's now going to be ESPN. No, no more Bounce TV, no more uh, Fox Sports 1, any of that stuff. What does that mean for you? What is it? I mean, is there a bit of a kick for you when you now when you realize this is going to be a bigger deal? This is going to be the day of Thanksgiving or the day after Thanksgiving in a lot of ways. It's going to be on ESPN. You're fighting with Arislandi Lara. It's it's a showcase fight for you. And you're going to be fighting on, a, you know, a, show, a network which 
reaches a whole lot more eyeballs. So you'll be fighting in front of you know millions of fans instead of thousands of fans. Right. Um, it means a lot to me, honestly. You know, uh, it gives me a chance to uh, brand myself to a bigger market and um, you know, create create more avenues for myself, for myself, both inside and out, out of the ring, which I am very excited for. So it, it's good for it's good for myself. It's good for boxing. Now it's it is during the Thanksgiving week, so I got to ask: Have they started setting side plates for you? Have you have you talked to the family and said, "Okay, look, I can't have Thanksgiving dinner right now, but damn it, you better put some turkey aside and some mashed potatoes, and damn it, don't scrimp on the gravy. Damn it, don't you dare scrimp on the gravy." Um, you know, I I it's it's not that hard, honestly. Um. In, in my amateur career, I've experienced, you know, tournaments and things of that nature where I couldn't, um, you know, enjoy the holidays like that. So, it, I'm kind of used to it, so it won't, it won't bother me that much. No, I'm not saying bother you, but, I mean, yet you, have, you made, have you made the call yet to, to, uh, to mom and dad and say, hey, I know you're going to have Thanksgiving dinner. I can't have it now, but damn it, I want leftovers. You know, I'm warm. Don't let everybody pick it at so when I come home, there's, there's no leftovers. Because, damn it, that's the best part about Thanksgiving is the leftovers. The turkey, right, the, you right. know, the pumpkin pie, all that stuff. Well, no, nah, my family's going to wait on me, so it's not going to be that big a deal. Ah, so, so you guys are having Thanksgiving dinner after the fight. Okay, and that makes right. more sense now. All right. So all this is going on, as we mentioned. We, we talked about the training. We talked about everything going on here with you. Uh, when you are doing these fights, how do you? who helps in terms of telling you or has your ear besides your trainer to – not overtrain, to not push yourself to the part where you come out flat during fights. Because I've seen that with a lot of young fighters, they'll work themselves, literally they'll push themselves to the brink for a fight like this, which is a game-changer fight, and sometimes they'll overtrain or they'll push themselves too far and they come out flat. Um, well, you know, I'm working with um, a great trainer, um, Johnny Hernandez, who's um, actually pretty unknown on the professional scene. Um, he had a very good uh, amateur program here in Central Florida, actually down in Melbourne, Florida. Palm Bay, I'm sorry. And um, him, um, Coach Carl McNair, who also had a very good amateur program in um, De- uh, D-Land, Florida, Deltona, Florida. Um, these are guys that I've known since I was, I mean, maybe like 10 or 11 years ago. Alongside with my dad, who um, still, you know, um, guys, training camp and guys, you know, he knows me better than anyone, so he lays down the guidelines. He's the one that really can look at me and say, hey, okay, let's slow it down. Let's pick it up. You know what I mean? So along with those three guys, um, camp is going amazing. How does it balance out when you have that? As Because you, you, it seems like you have three trainers in a sense. You have your father. You have, a tr- you have, her, you have Coach Hernandez. Uh, how does the three, Coach McNair. Coach McNair. How do you guys balance that so that, you know, each guy is not stepping on each other's toes? Because there's the old saying, you know, too many generals, not enough soldiers. How do you how do you guys balance that so that everybody has enough to either, you know, blend or, you know, they're not just stepping on each other's toes and uh, getting into pissing wars? Oh, no, 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 no. You know, we have, um, we have a, a very good relationship between all of us, you know, like I said, my dad, everyone knows that. At the end of the day, my father is the guy that um, makes the final call on a lot of things. Um, Coach Hernandez, is, uh, he handles the pad and the strategy and the film work and those, na- those things of those nature. And um, Coach Carl, you know, he handles my, my hands and camera and wrap my hands, my cuts um, and everything like that, with my conditioning. And, you know, he's always the guy that they're like, okay, they, okay, they want us to um, we'll do two more sprints, you know. Things like that nature, but everyone has their roles, everyone understands their roles, and, you know, everyone is, there are no egos, you know, everyone is there for, everyone is there for my best interest. Once again, it's going to be the big, big card, uh, the day of or day after uh, Thanksgiving, it's, once again, PBC on ESPN, and Arislani Lar defends his tight against Zan Zabak, and this man here will be defending uh, the pride and joy of Winter Haven, Florida, against this man, against Udell Johnson. We got Daquan Arnett. Uh, Daquan, as you mentioned before, it's a big fight for you. You are fighting a guy who's a big step up from past competition. He's a guy who brings him into your background, and you win a fight of it like this. 
gets you maybe bigger fights, gets you bigger things. So for you to win, win impressively, to start banging the war drums for a top 15 fight, a top, you know, 30 fight, what's the key to victory for you come November 25th? Um, just to be smart, you know, be the fighter I am, smart, fast, strong, you know, explosive, and uh, just be smart. Like I said, he's a regular guy. He's like, um, he will try to land the big shot and um, try to own um, his volume. So, you know, just be smart, move my feet, move my head, and just, just be the fighter I am. Well, there you have it. Once again, I give you the pride and joy all the way from Winter Haven, Florida. Sorry, Winter Park, Florida. I give you it is Daquan Arnett. Daquan, before I let you go, where can the fans check you out at? Where is the Twitter page, Instagram, uh, Facebook? Where can the fans hit you up? Well, you can find me on all social media sites at Daquan Arnett. My first and last name. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of that. You know, um, you can check me out. Well, there you have it. Once again, I give you it is Daquan Arnett. And uh, Daquan, always on a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, we come back. It's uh, once again. You can check out more great action here only on theboxingvoice.com.